Okay, so um, let's uh, shift gears just a little bit and talk about adding nitrogen to a uh, hydrocarbon. Now, the nice way to think about these nitrogen compound. And I hope everybody can come up with the simplest nitrogen compound. First of all, if we start with nitrogen, everybody looks at the periodic table, and I hope you notice that nitrogen has five valence electrons. Therefore, nitrogen is always going to form how many bonds? I hope you said three. All right. The simplest atom that nitrogen could bond with is hydrogen. And so you're not surprised that three hydrogens come, come, come along and each hydrogen shares a pair of electrons with the central nitrogen, and that gives us our simplest nitrogen molecule. And I hope everybody knows the name of this very important simple molecule. Its name is ammonia, and you've probably all smelled ammonia. It's a very acrid smell. Okay, Good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add, start, start talking about... Um, a new functional group. They're called amines. Okay, and notice that they sound a little bit like ammonia. And the focus of an amine is a central nitrogen. And again, nitrogen is always going to have three things attached to it. So, in order to make it into an organic molecule, guess what? At least one of those attached groups has to be a carbon group. Okay. So we start out, and the simplest amine has a carbon connected to the nitrogen. And then the other attachments are hydrogens. Okay? So if I fill in all the hydrogens, this would be my simplest amine. And not surprisingly, that is called methyl amine. I hope that makes sense to you. Methyl, we've got a methyl group attached to the nitrogen. And again, the focus is the central nitrogen. Okay? So that's methyl amine. Now, Let's add another carbon. And if you think about it now, you've got two possibilities, right? So again, we're going to start with our nitrogen. And we've got a carbon already attached on one side. Now we've got, a, we've got two options. We can either attach another carbon here. Running out of space on the side here. Put in the hydrogens. I bet you everybody can name that. That's ethyl amine. And again, notice it's real similar to up here. We've got the central nitrogen and attached, we've got the carbon group. Uh, or adding that second carbon, I hope you've come up with the second possibility. The second possibility is what? The second possibility is. Now, I'll keep my carbon here, but now let's replace one of the hydrogens with a carbon. And again, I put in all of my hydrogens here. I now have a different amine. This is called diethyl amine. Now, notice the difference. Up here, we had a structure that could be represented by a general formula R, where R is any carbon group, connected to a nitrogen, and we had two hydrogens attached. Okay. These are called primary amines. Essentially, it means there's only one carbon attached to the nitrogen. We sometimes use that designation for primary. You've probably already discovered what we call these. These are structures that have a general formula like this, where there are two carbon groups attached to the central nitrogen. And we call those, you guessed it, secondary amines. And we use the designation that as an abbreviation. All right. So again, secondary amines have two carbon groups attached. So you know where we're going next, I hope. We're going to add another carbon. And now we have several possibilities. We could add it to the original chain and keep it a primary amine. We could go and add it to one of the true carbons we have at our secondary amine and keep it a secondary amine. 
Or we could come along and say, let's replace all of the hydrogens with carbons. Again, I'll take the time to write in all of those hydrogens. And we now have no hydrogens connected to the nitrogen. And we've completely replaced all of those hydrogens on the nitrogen with carbons. And you're not surprised that, first of all, the name of this is trimethylamine. And I hope you know the name here. It's a tertiary. Good word. Tertiary. And I bet you've already guessed the shorthand. We use a shorthand of that to represent tertiary amine. So amines can come in sort of three different types. Primary amines, where we have one carbon and two nitrogens connected to the, uh, two hydrogens, excuse me, connected to the nitrogen. Like this, okay. We can have secondary amines, where we have two carbon groups attached to the nitrogen and one hydrogen, or we can have tertiary amines, where we have all three groups. And so again, if I was going to show the designation for that, the general formula for a tertiary amine would show three R groups. And again, I'll use the designation R sub A, R sub B, R sub C to indicate that those R groups, those carbon groups, do not need to be the same. And this would be my general formula for a tertiary amine. Okay, So amines are derivatives of ammonia and they are characterized by having a nitrogen with at least one of the connections to the nitrogen being a carbon group. Those are amines. All right, one more functional group there. 